Hello, Richard. I'm a huge fan of your work, and one day I really hope I can meet you in person. But I urge you to rethink your position on an issue which I consider to be extremely important. I recently watched a video called Iris Fudge Questions Richard, Richard Dawkins on Circumcision on the Bonobo 3D channel. I currently have no way of verifying whether what she said regarding her communication with you was uh, truthful, but I have followed your work for a few years now, and I've noticed that you have been quite silent on the subject of circumcision. So for the purpose of this video, I will be operating under the premise that what she said is accurate. Your response to her giving you some material was basically, I'm circumcised, is that bad? And that you feel perfectly sexually adequate. This is perhaps the most common objection I hear from secular people uh, to, the non to the banning of non-medical circumcision of a minor. I know how passionate and angry people who make this argument can react. And if you feel like this, I understand that this is in no way a personal attack and I please urge you to hear me out. So, you feel okay, that's fantastic. I'm glad you don't feel damaged as a result, and I'd much rather you felt like, uh, felt like this than you saw yourself as a perpetual victim. But you are operating under some rather faulty reasoning. Supposing I was to say, I was beaten as a child and I turned out okay, or I was bullied as a child and I turned out okay, or even, I was sexually abused as a child and I turned out okay. Or perhaps an Egyptian woman may say, I was circumcised as a baby and I turned out okay and I can still, and I can still uh, perform sexually. All of the people above may well have turned out to be fine people. And I'm sure you'd be with me if I was to say that the existence of these well-rounded individuals doesn't in any way justify the abuse they faced as a child. They may be doing a lot better than most people who haven't uh, gone through said abuse, but they also don't have a set of experiences absent from said abuse to compare themselves to. They don't know any different. The negative effects of these forms of abuse are well documented, and so it's not unreasonable to assume that those who, um, who have gone through that abuse to become well-rounded uh, adults would perhaps be even better off as adults if they hadn't gone through that abuse. Similarly, the harm caused by circumcision, both short-term and long-term, as well as severe complications including death, have been very well documented. So what about the reasons for circumcision? I'm sure you've probably heard these before, but here are some of the most common. It helps prevent HIV and AIDS. It improves hygiene. It improves smell by reducing bacteria levels. It looks better by removing unsightly flaps of skin. Well, actually, these four reasons were taken from a video called Top 5 Reasons to Circumcise Your Daughter. For boys and girls, these are complete bullshit, except for the fifth reason given, which was to allow male circumcision, but not female circumcision, is sexist. That I consider to be true. It should be banned for both sexes. Every single argument made for circumcision has been used to justify female genital mutilation, and none of them are any more valid than the arguments for the existence of God. Another thing which people in the West are often unaware of is that there are many different types of female genital mutilation, ranging from a simple pinprick of the clitoris to full removal of the clitoris and labia. Some of these are considerably less harmful than circumcision. Some of these are considerably more so. And type 1, uh, type one uh, female genital mutilation is the removal of the clitoral hood, which is a very close equivalent to circumcision, but it does remove far less tissue. If I, I could probably throw a whole bookshelf of studies your way, but I think it's completely unnecessary, and all I really need to do is approach this from a simple ethical perspective. If it's a consensual adult making the choice, 
that's absolutely fine with me. Uh, people should be free to do what uh, do whatever they want with their own bodies. If it's for a medical emergency, um, then that's also fine because it prevents further harm. But I think that any non-medical genital mutilation of a boy or girl, ranging from a perverted symbolic ritual to permanently sexually disabling them, is absolutely 100% wrong and has no justification. If you think it looks better and um, better, then let them do it as an adult. Babies don't have sex. Parents deserve some freedom, but they don't own their children in the same way that I own this pen, which I can mutilate or destroy at will. Children are people who deserve their own self-determination. I put it to you that if we lived in a world where circumcision hadn't been traditionally practiced, the idea would sound absolutely abhorrent to you. It would sound like absolute insanity to you or any other sane person. So please, read some of the material I've provided and please think.